Con todo el revuelo que está habiendo últimamente sobre Elon Musk y sus nuevos robots Tesla, he pensado que sería interesante mostrarte esta charla que estuve viendo de Elon Musk con Peter Diamondis. Obviamente es en inglés y sé que hay muchos de vosotros que no os gusta, porque no lo entendéis, pero he puesto subtítulos y intentaré encontrar una mejor solución a esto pronto. He cortado la charla en las cosas que más interesantes me han parecido para no hacerte perder el tiempo, así que vamos a ello. But on the AI, and I'm sorry to go negative on this, but what are you, what are you, what are you doing right now that's most important for uh, countering that 10% probability of dystopian outcomes? Is there something, or do you, uh, is there a regulation that you're, that you're promoting? How do you think about, uh, you know, the upside will take care of itself. How do you protect against the downside? Well, my, my think with respect to AI safety is that you have to be, create a maximally truth-seeking AI, uh, which may sound obvious, but that's what I'm seeing being produced is, is not maximally truth-seeking. Um, it tends to be trained to be politically correct, um, and for a lot of the AIs that are being uh, trained in, um, in the San Francisco Bay Area, there are... Uh, They have, they have taken on the philosophy of the people around them, which kind of makes sense. Uh, so, you know, you have sort of a, a, a woke, um, nihilistic, in my opinion, um, philosophy that is being built into these AIs. Um, and they're being taught to say crazy things in some cases uh, that, are, that are very troubling. Um, but when Google Gemini came out, uh, you know, people asked, Uh, whether it is more, which is worse, misgendering Caitlyn Jenner or global thermonuclear war? And it said misgendering Caitlyn Jenner, which is obviously a problem because, you know, we'd all die in global thermonuclear war. And so if, if you have AI that's programmed for things like that, it could conclude that the best way to ensure that uh, nobody is misgendered is to uh, annihilate all humans, mm. thus making the, f the probability of a future misgendering zero. You know, that's highly problematic. Um, so, so you really want to have a, a maximally truth-seeking AI, and um, I can't emphasize that enough. That's incredibly important. Um, and obviously build an AI that loves humanity. Um, and, um, you know, I, and I think these... So, so I'm a little concerned. That's why I created XAI, which is to, to have an AI that is maximally truth-seeking, um, that aspirationally does love humanity and will you know, seek the best interests of, of humanity going forward. You know, you just tweeted that you're doubling the size of the Colossus net, um, uh, cluster. Um, yeah. What are your It, thoughts? Already, we're, we're, we already have with XAI the most powerful training cluster in the world, and we're about to double it. You know, Elon, we have a number of national leaders, uh, corporate financial leaders from the Middle East here. What's your advice to decision makers here in the room that don't want to miss the AI transformation and will be part of the leadership of that AI transformation? Do they need to build their own clusters here? Are they partnering? Yeah, I, I, well, I, I think there's probably all countries will have their own AI clusters over time. Um, it's currently very difficult to actually build an AI cluster and have it run. Um, it, 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 it's not like just pulling a computer out of a box. It, it, they, they are currently very difficult to run. Um, and you have to say, are you going to be training a frontier model? Um, Because if you're training a frontier model, then you, you need a massive amount of compute and a level of technical skill that is only a few, a few companies possess. Um, so, but, but over time, I think every country will have uh, AI compute clusters. Um, it's just, it's just going to be a, a normal thing that every country has. So, yeah. Um, so a basic infrastructure for every nation, like they have an electrical grid? Yeah, it'll be something like electricity or, you know, 
uh, just or, or you know having an airline or something like that. It's every every country will have uh, AIs or multiple AIs. So, um, and there will be a lot of robots. There'll be a lot of robots. Like, uh, uh, but we had way more robots than people. Yeah, let's have that conversation a second because people are concerned about, uh, as you said, dwindling populations. AI and, and robots have the potential to help support the GDP. Um, yes. Congratulations on Optimus 2 and soon Optimus 3. Uh, your prediction on the number of robots by 2040, humanoid robots to be specific, what order of magnitude? By 2040? Yeah. So. Um, I think by 20, if you say like 2040, probably there are more humanoid robots than there are people. So on the so order of 10 I'd billion. Say, yeah. Yes. And your price point on these humanoid robots? You're, you're pretty good on pricing. At, at, Some, sometimes you're off at, on at, timing. At, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm often optimistic on timing, but um, although, you know, the press will report when I'm late, but not when I'm early. Um, you know, for example, our Shanghai factory, uh, we thought it would take about a year and a half, and we did it in 11 months. Um, our Nevada factory, we thought two years, we did it in 18 months. Um, or the Colossus you know, cl cluster. Texas, yeah. Texas factory, two years, we did it in 14 months. So I, I, I've been early actually many times, it's just that it's just not reported. Um, so when I, when I make a prediction, I, I try to figure out, I try to say, what, what is the 50th percentile likely? Which means that half the time I should be wrong. Um, so I'm, I'm not sandbagging, essentially. Um, um, so, but, but, but I, I think it's, once you get out of 2040, that's a long time from now, um, going 25 years, there'll be at least 10 billion humanoid robots. Um, and price, price uh, point? Class, yeah, the price point will be, I think, quite low. Um, probably twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 for a robot that can do anything. Um, we will be in a future, in, 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 assuming we are on the good path of AI, I think we will be in a future of abundance. You know, obviously you wrote a book called Abundance. <laughs> so I think you would agree that that is probably the outcome. Um, that that uh, basically anyone will, anyone will be able to have any goods and services they want. The, the actual marginal cost of goods and services will be extremely low in the future. Let me, so, in yeah. our last four minutes, let me change the subject to something near and dear to both of our hearts. Uh, congratulations on, on Starship. Uh, it was literally awesome. Uh, probably the engineering feat of this. Recuerda suscribirte también a la newsletter alertaia.com para no perderte nada sobre la inteligencia artificial.